In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, what are the requirements in the building regs for outside lighting? This question relates to the recent video that we made on the new Castra floodlight from Luceco. And if you're interested in or are regularly installing lighting, you may want to check out our CPD module that we made on this subject over on the know-how page of efix.co.uk. Now, it may seem a little odd to be looking to the building regs for requirements about lighting rather than BS 7671 or the Society of Lights and Lighting, but one of the areas that the building regs is concerned with is the conservation of fuel and power, and that's covered by part L of the building regs. Conveniently, there's also a guide to help you comply with these requirements in the form of the Domestic Building Services Compliance Guide, which you can access via the Government Planning website. Within that document, you'll find section 12 on lighting and table 42, which has the following information on exterior lighting. The compliance guide gives us two options, each with three requirements. Option A is to either install fittings that can't be fitted with the lamp over 100 watts per fitting, which is a bit of a throwback to older, less efficient light sources, and have them controlled by PIRs so that they turn off when an area is unoccupied, and also have them controlled by photocells to switch off when there is sufficient daylight. So these requirements can be met by one of the PIR variants of the Castro floodlight range if you select one below 100 watts. Option B is to install light sources that have a lamp efficacy greater than 45 lumens per circuit watt and have them controlled by photocells to switch off when there is sufficient daylight and allow occupants to turn the fittings on and off manually. So why two different options and what are the benefits of both? Well you can see that the first option allows for the use of less efficient light sources but places them under stricter control so the likelihood of them being left on for long periods of time by accident is much reduced. The second option, on the other hand, allows for more flexible control by the occupants who can switch the fitting on and off manually. And in the event that it's left on overnight by accident, the fitting is using a small amount of power and will be switched off automatically at daybreak. So there we go. That's the current requirements of Partel for outside lighting in domestic installations. For further information on this subject, please check out the CPD module we mentioned at the outset on the know-how page at efix.co.uk. But as always, we want to hear from you. Were you aware that the building regs had requirements for lighting? Do you take account of these requirements when carrying out installation work? Please leave your thoughts and questions in the comments section below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.